Today's episode of Tales from the Bottle will be focusing on the UK. Boo. Specifically, we'll be talking about the Stone of Scone. You <laughs> can't get much more British a name than that. Yes, from the title alone, the video is known to be about the British throne, so don't moan and you'll be shown the Stone of Scone and how it was stolen. The Stone of Scone, otherwise known as the Coronation Stone, or the Stone of Destiny, is a block of red sandstone that for centuries was used in the coronation of Scottish monarchs. The stone was kept in the Scone Abbey in the town of Scone, Scotland, but how it got there is unclear. There are many legends surrounding the stone's origin, and most seem to agree that it came from Ireland. One legend states that the stone is actually the biblical stone Jacob used as a pillow when he had a vision of heaven, and it was brought to Ireland by the prophet Jeremiah before ending up in Scotland. However, in modern times, geologists concluded that the stone was quarried near Scone. So how Ireland ended up as the penultimate stop in the stone's world tour in all the legends is a mystery. What would that Jeremiah fella be doing here with a stone anyway? In 1296, during the First Scottish War of Independence, the stone was stolen by the English. Well, that's them Brits for you. Can't have a thing with them cunts around. Stones, potatoes, countries, ash or thieving bastards. After his victory at the Battle of Dunbar, England's King Edward I robbed the stone from Scone Abbey as war spoils. Although some believe that the monks hid the original stone and the stone he took was a replica. Conspiracy theory number one. King Eddie had the stone fitted in the base of a specially made coronation chair, and the English monarchs have used it in their coronations ever since. The stone being in the base of the chair signifies that whoever is being crowned on the chair is also being crowned as King or Queen of Scotland too. And so, the stone remained in Westminster Abbey in London from 1296 until 1950. Then some Scottish students went off with it. Ian Hamilton, a student of law at the University of Glasgow, had been reading up on the history of the stone and its current location in Westminster Abbey, and thought that the stone belonged in Scotland. As such, he decided he'd see if it was possible to rob the thing. He made some trips down to Westminster Abbey to scout the place out, and found that security there was just lax enough to make viable his potential heist. Most of the doors were made of tough old oak, but one of the side doors was made of much softer pine. On one occasion, Hamilton stayed in the Abbey past closing time. He was discovered by a custodian who assumed that Hamilton was a drunk who had lost his way. Believe me, it happens. He showed him out of the place and gave him a coin to help him on his way. That never happens. Ian Hamilton and three other Scottish students made their way back down to Westminster Abbey in the early hours of December 25th, 1950. Ah, sure, what else would you be doing on Christmas Day? They pried open the pine door with a crowbar and made their way to the coronation chair. Of course, the stone is quite heavy and it's built into the chair, so they had some difficulty in getting it out. By difficulty, I mean they broke part of the chair. Then when they were pulling the stone out, it fell to the floor and broke the toes of one of the lads. Less hilariously, the stone actually broke in two after hitting the ground. Hamilton took the smaller piece to one of the cars outside, and the lone girl drove off with it. The remaining three lads had to haul the bigger piece to the second car, and off they went. Almost immediately, the night watchman noticed the stone was gone, and he called it into the police. The police soon had roadblocks on every road out of London and on the borders of Scotland and Wales. The first car ran into roadblocks, but managed to get through them. After all, it was fairly unlikely this woman driving alone on Christmas night had just stolen this massive stone by herself. The lads, on the other hand, were going to have a harder time explaining what they were up to. The place had just been broken into, the chair's been damaged, something's been stolen, and here's a car with three students in it. If I were the police, I wouldn't even bother looking in the trunk. I'd just go straight to the beating. Fortunately, the lads got out of London before the roadblock was in place, but they were worried they wouldn't make it much further, so they buried their piece of the stone in an empty field to collect later. When the pieces were finally reunited in Scotland, they had the stone repaired by a stonemason and hid it. They weren't going to be able to hide it forever though, as police had been asking around the libraries of Scotland if anyone had been taking out books about the stone or Westminster Abbey. Of course, having done exactly this, the students were questioned by police. None of them cracked, but they knew the jig was up. They had to give up the stone before the police started getting evidence tying them to the crime. 
They contacted two councillors of the town of Arbroath and met them in Arbroath Abbey, where they left the stone. After the students left, the councillors reported the stone's discovery to the police, but said they were not able to describe the thieves. Isn't that unusual? So, after three and a half months, the stone was brought back to England. In 1953, it was used in the coronation of Queen Elizabeth II, and it hasn't been used since. It remained in England until 1996, when the British government decided to give it back to Scotland. But it's only on kind of a loan. It's still property of the crown, and they will be asking for it back for future coronations. The students were never prosecuted for the theft, or the breaking and entering, or the damages caused. Quite lucky considering the significance of what they did, and the fact that all their identities are known to police. Ian Hamilton, who is now a criminal defence attorney, has said the only part of the event he feels guilty about is accepting the coin from the custodian who thought he was a bum. That's pretty funny. Also, imagine your attorney was a lad most famous for fucking stealing something. And of course, some believe that the stone Hamilton handed back was a replica and the original is still hidden. Conspiracy theory number two. That's two points in time where the stone was handed over by people who had reasonable motive to not hand it over. That means the real, original stone of Scone could still be out there somewhere. That also means that the geologists could have tested the wrong stone. That means that the legends could be true. If I could somehow find the real Stone of Scone, I could bring it back to its rightful place in Ireland. Then I'd bring it to the inauguration mound on the hill of Tara, and just like in times of old, I'd be crowned High King of Ireland. So yeah, if you know where the stone is, give us a shout, will ya? I'll give you about 20 quid for it. <laughs>